Episode 4 of Raising Kanan started with a lot of actions with the unique hunting for who really snitched on his drop off and how he's going to get his product back on. So he ended up killing his childhood friends anyways and this alone should tell you that in Nick's world there is no friend when it comes to his product and money. In my previous video, I spoke about how Kenan's action always fucked things up and how his decision to meet the Vina in front of his mother's stash house will end up creating a huge problem. Now, in this episode 4, I believe you agree with me when I said Kenan's action always fucked things up. And that is why we see Jukebox always reminding him not to fuck things up. Don't fuck it up. What's up, Power Fans and YouTube? It's your boy Nino, and I'm back with another video of Power Book 3 Raising Canaan, Episode 4. Now, let me start with how Unique emotionally blackmailed Davina to snitch on Raquel's stash house. I would say it didn't take a minute for Unique to squeeze that information out of Davina. He told her exactly what she needed to hear, and I don't blame Davina that much for telling. Every girl in her situation and having her mother in that state would definitely want to do something to help her get clean. So in as much as it was a betrayal to Kanan, she was doing it for her mother too and Nick got her at the right spot. But well, someone would say Kanan is offering to help Davina and even buy stuff for her. But one thing to note is that Davina needs more than Kanan buying her provisions. She needs her mom clean so that she can also enjoy the mother and child love Kanan is always enjoying with his mother. But then, if Kanan finds out that it was Davina who gave up his mother's touch house which almost got him killed as well, then trust me, we might see Kanan's second killing. With what Davina did by telling Nick where to find the touch house, trust me, this is a reason for Kanan to kill Davina for betrayal. Not for only betraying him but also for almost getting him killed. Don't forget, if Kanan took Buck 20 out for taking his mother's corner, then he can take out Davina for what she did because we all know that Kanan can't take out Nick himself at this moment. If my theory is correct, then that will also establish the point at which Kanan stopped trusting friends which became one of his key principles in the game and that was what he constantly told Tommy and Ghost that there are no friends on the street. So right now, I think Davina has given Kanan a good reason to take her out. Now, in as much as the stash house invasion was already a messed up situation, Kanan as usual has created another messed up by leaving evidence under his bed that would definitely create the family division I always talk about. If you haven't watched my previous videos, kindly do so and you will understand all these points I'm building up. Now, why do I say this will create family division? One. Rack told Kanan to personally stay out of the stash house and he refused. Secondly, Marvin shouldn't have involved Kanan in the transfer from the stash house to the new location. This is the reason why Raquel always find it difficult to trust some things with her big brother. The same reason she always speaks in code with Uncle Lulu whenever she doesn't want Uncle Marvin to know something. But then what does this mean to Marvin now? Since he know it was Unique's guy who robbed the stash house and he is trying to keep the events from Raquel, it means he will have to find his own ways to get the product and the money back from Nick before Raquel finds out. And the possibility of Raquel finding out is also high because Kanan has left evidence of a dangerous event under his bed. So unless Kanan find a good explanation to the bloody shirt under his bed, then I guess Uncle Marvin's effort to keep the robbery out of Raquel's reach would definitely be useless. Now moving forward, in this episode, we also saw how Jukebox is growing in her street hustling just to make things work for herself. Her passion in the music career is one thing that can make her do the craziest things even if it will get her caught or arrested. We also seen the other side of Jukebox and how her feelings can make her act carelessly when she attempted to steal the jacket alone. Well, luckily for her, the man she saved from her friend from getting killed has even out with her this time by letting her go with the stolen jacket. We have also seen a new introduction in this episode where we get to see Jukebox's girlfriend's parents. One thing we should keep in mind is that they seem cool and funny but they are not cool with everything. I believe the relationship Jukebox is having will definitely face huge challenges when the girl's parents find out which I'm sure they definitely will. And it is also possible when they do find out about their affairs they will stop Jukebox from coming to their house. Now, Jessica is putting her brother on and that is a good thing for a sister to do for her little brother. But with Uncle Lou, she is getting extremely ahead of herself. Like I said in my previous video about Jessica and Lou, 
If care is not taken, trust me, she will catch a hot one. But then, talking about who will catch a hot one first, I believe he's going to be crowned. He is overstepping his boundaries when it comes to Jessica. And Lulu has already spotted the move and trust me, Lulu will not think twice before putting bullet in Crown's head if he keeps moving to his girl. And you can see that Lulu has made the math already. Now, someone will not understand why Uncle Lulu doesn't want to hook up Jukebox with Crown. If Lulu is thinking of taking Crown out of his way, then linking his knees to him will make it more complicated for him to do so anytime. Because if Jukebox starts to work with Crown and Lulu finds it necessary to kill him, that will be more difficult for him to do than when his niece is out of the equation. So for him not to make Jukebox suspicious of anything, I believe he gave her the excuse that her father won't like it if he helps her. So it's not like Uncle Lulu couldn't have helped his knee with Crown, but he has his own plans already. Now, one assurance we all have in raising Kanan is that no matter the situation or the circumstances, both Kenan and Jukebox will never die. They might go through some rough times and even at the point of death or possibly catching a bullet, but the bottom line is they both won't die because we all know how they both ended. But for any other character in Power Book 3 is extremely expendable and that is one thing I like about this particular show. Here is one interesting thing. Kanan finding out who Bosket is, question is, will Kanan start liking him now? Will his perception change about him? Will Kanan become allies with his mom's boyfriend to help him cover up some of his mistakes along the line? I think it's yes. And if I am Kanan and all this mess is building around me, I will definitely use my mom's boyfriend to my advantage to come head down from grounding me. Should Kanan try this move again, that will be him exposing his mother to the kind of life she is living that Busket is possibly not aware of yet. Because Busket will surely be asking Kanan some questions along the way. But question of the day is, what will make Busket take up a part-time job in a club in the first place if he has nothing under his sleeves? Could he be an undercover cop? Is it possible we'll see the male version of Angela Valdez here? Well, leave your thoughts in the comment section so we discuss all these curious questions I stated above. Feel free to leave any suspicions you also have about Busket and theories you also have in mind. If you like this video, please don't forget to hit the like button Subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so yet and leave your comments. Let's discuss everything power. Don't forget to share this video as well and do check out my previous videos. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you in the next video. Subscribe though.